some things in your life. Sometimes we can't hear God. He's trying to get something to us, and we can't hear him. And, you know, problems and situations and afflictions will drive us to prayer, will drive us to seek God. And God will always answer us, always. Now, I'm not going to take long, but I just want to start something today. Well, God's already started, but I, I want to let you know what's happening. Can I, can I tell you what God is doing in this ministry and in our lives? Anybody ever heard of paradigm shift? Anybody know what a paradigm shift is? It is a radical new way of thinking. A radical new way of doing things. A radical, new, a radical way of getting something accomplished that you hadn't thought of before. Something that brings about momentum. Brings about, uh, like we could say, for instance, there's been a paradigm shift when it comes to television. Had a man of God some years ago had a vision that people would be walking around in China with televisions in their hands. This back in 1958 with televisions in their hands. He saw the cell phones back in 1958 where people were watching video on cell phones. There's a paradigm shift. At first, when we was growing up, to have a thought like that, you had to carry a big old TV around, you know, look like a big box. God is shifting things, speeding things up, and giving us better ways of doing things. They've always been there, but he's now revealing those things. Now, I want to share something with you real quick. I'm going to call this real quick, and I'm not going to be long. The gospel paradigm shift. The gospel paradigm shift. God is shifting the church back into apostolic mode, back into apostolic method, back into the apostolic way of doing things. And many of us have called ourselves apostolic, uh, uh, Pentecostal, word of faith, all of these different cliches. But how many of you know there's one church? One Lord, one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. And God has a way of getting us back on track, especially those that he have called to these things. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Everybody's familiar with that. It says, And he gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, I want you to understand this morning that in worship, God changes you. The Bible says we're changed by his glory. In that anointing, in that glory, you're changed, you're softened, you're molded. And, and, and the Holy Spirit is using that worship to repair you. Some of you all got repaired in your souls today. Some of you got repaired in your bodies today. Some of your spirits got touched today. Some of you may not even realize what happened to you, to you later on today when you realize that that mindset that you had prior to coming has been broken. Why? In that glory, he prepares you. He perfects you. And he's doing that because he has a mission for you. God did not call you to warm a pew all your days. Now, come on, you don't stay at this. No, 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 sister, you ain't got to rush from right there. If you want to lay out there on that floor, that's fine. You don't have to rush away from that altar. Look, God did not, you don't take your car and stay at the service station all day. You fill it up and you go about your way. This is a filling station. This is a repair shop. This is a fuel repair. This is a, an injection, an impartation shop. This is where God wants to strengthen you that you may run the race that's set before you. This shift that God is doing, he, he, is, he, is, he is repairing us that we may help repair others. He's blessing you that you may be a blessing. I don't know if you remember over in... Uh, there was two incidents where Jesus told the guys to go fishing. And Luke chapter 5, the first time they went fishing, the net tore. You remember they tried to pull in the draw, the draw of fish and the nets tore. He told them to launch out into the deep and the net tore in Luke chapter 5, verse 6. In John chapter 21, he told them again, cast the net to the right side of the boat. And the Bible says they pulled in the draw and the net did not break. God intention is to fix every crack every weak spot in your life 
that you may be able to bring in the harvest of these last days and not lose one soul that God has given you an opportunity to influence. See, he's going to fix you so that you can help others get fixed. Some of you all got platforms, but your net still need mending. Come on, somebody need to hear me up in here. Some of y'all got ministries, but your net still need, men, need mending. Come on up in here. He want to mend your net. So that anointing, that glory. Hey! Glory is here. Glory is here. So that nothing will, no fish will fall out of the net that you personally have been given by God. How many, all of y'all, how many of you know you got a ministry? I don't see enough hands up in here. I say, how many of you know you got a ministry? I didn't ask if you got a piece of wood. I said, how many of you know you got a ministry? You're called to be ministers of reconciliation. There are souls that I'll never talk to that you will. Y'all better hear me up in here. There are people that you will reach that I'll never see. But you have been given a ministry. And our job is to prepare you, to fix you, to get God into you. So that you won't lose nothing that can get caught in your net. Sister, I can see you back there. See, you a net. You with them earrings on back there, back there. Yeah, 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 I'm talking to you. You a net. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ashley, you a net. You a net. A uh, 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 Tiffany, you a, you a net. God going to throw you over on the right side of the boat. Y'all don't hear me up in here. He said, I want to see the first couple of times he throwed you over into somebody's life. Some of them escaped. Boy, I feel my help up in here right now. Some of them escaped. Some of them backslid. Some of them let you down because you wasn't really repaired yet. But God said, I'm repairing you. I'm fixing you. I'm mending your net. I'm going to show you how to mend your net. I'm going to show you how to keep your net strong. So when you go out, when I launch you out, when I throw you on the right side, throw you on the left side, or if I throw you out into the deep, you won't lose one fish. You won't lose one soul. So this is what this apostolic shift is all about. It's about you. It ain't about the pulpit. It's never been about the pulpit. It's never been about the fivefold ministry. It's been about you. Our job is to fix you. Y'all don't want to hear me up in here. Our job is to prepare you. Our job is to impart to you. Our job is to excite you. Our job is to send you. Boy, I'm about to get happy up in here. I don't have enough time today to really do this thing justice, but you're getting my, you're getting, you're understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Philippians 1, 6 say that thing, somebody say that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing that he started in me. He will complete it. He going to complete he going to mend me. He going to fix me. He going to repair me. He going to make me a net that can hold souls. Child of God, there are people in your life, in your sphere of influence, that another preacher probably never get to say a word to. But you the net. I don't know if y'all can hear me. You are the net God throwed into their life to catch them. So your job is to get in here and let us help you mend yourself. That's what that anointing was about all day, all morning. Help you. Mend your mind. Crazy thinking. Mend your heart. Crazy thinking. Mend your body stuff going on in it so you can be that net that can hold. It's all about souls. I don't know if y'all can hear me. It's all about souls. You going to be all right over there? It's all about souls. He want to fix you. He want to fix you. He said, Philippians 1, 6, be in confidence of this very thing, that he which be had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Child of God, I don't care where you're at. I don't care what's going on in your life. I want to announce to that devil and your flesh right now, they might as well give up and let you go because God ain't going to quit working on you. He's got a plan for you. He's got a mission for you. He's got a job for you to do. He's not going to quit, Tory. Ain't going to quit. He's going to mend you. I don't care if your net toe open, a whale could fall through. Don't worry. Woo! Lord have mercy. Don't worry. God's going to mend that thing. Can y'all hear me up in here? 
you, you might say, Lord, just mend my neck. Just mend me. Just mend me. What, what, mend, just mend me. Just fix me, Lord, so nothing won't fall out that you give me an opportunity to gather glory to God. Fix me. If my neck got a strained place in it, it's got a loose ravel in it, it's got a hole in it, it's got something in it that could cause a, a soul to escape, Lord, fix it. I give you permission to mend my neck. Somebody need to hear me up in here. I give you permission to mend my neck. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I can't even really even get this thing out this morning. Woo! child, can y'all hear me? God's up to something. This is no accident. What we experienced this morning, God is saying, putting an amen stamp of approval, yeah, that's right, on what he's about to do up in here. You ain't seen nothing yet. Some of you all don't even know you're going to be just what God told you you're going to be. I'm, can, can I tell you this? God going to redeem the time that you lost. He gonna fix your net, redeem the time, and throw you back on the right side of the boat. Some of y'all got thrown on the wrong side of the boat. Some of y'all got thrown out in the deep before you were ready, but God said, I'm finna fix all that. Wasn't no accident, sister. <laughs> Wasn't no accident, brother. God's about to mend you. If you can just allow him to bathe you in the anointing. If you can allow him to speak his wisdom out of the ministry gifts that he's placed in your life. If you can allow him to uh, impart to you the glory that is yours. You know, Adam, he fell from the glory of God. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory. But Jesus has come to give you back the glory and honor that the devil stole from you. Some of you didn't have stuff stole from you. Had your honor stole from you. Had the glory stole from you. Had your money stole from you. Had your reputation stole from you. God said, I'm about to make you shine again. Right in the face of those who thought you were dull and dark and counted out. He said, I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to polish you up. I'm going to fix you up. I'm going to repair you. And I'm going to cause you to rise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen up on you. Now, I'm getting ready to let you go. I want to share if I could just give me, give me two minutes to share this. The church has been preaching two gospels. Are you ready? The first gospel and the one we get stuck on is the gospel of salvation. For 20 years, the preacher trying to get your spirit full, your mind renewed, your body healed, and your life holy. Preaching the gospel of salvation for 20 years, and we've been guilty. But I'm going to just tell you like it is. We've been guilty. But how many of you know the gospel of salvation is entry level? That's entry level. That's entry level. Jesus said, I'm the door. But if any man come in, he goes out and in. He goes out. There's more to this than just the door of salvation. You're not, you're not saved to say you're saved and go to heaven. There's a second gospel that you're about to hear a lot of around here. God is about, yeah, you might well write this on your diary or whatever you want to write it on. Today's day, I am being transformed today. I begin my next, I begin my paradigm shift today. Today, 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 my paradigm shift in the kingdom starts today. How many of you know you're saved? You know you're going to heaven. I don't care how you're living. You know you're going to heaven because the blood don't pay, the blood don't pay for you. So why do we have to still rally around the gospel of salvation for 20 years? But there's another gospel. It's all part of the book called the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Jesus said that the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached before the end comes. All nations are going to hear the gospel of the kingdom. Not the gospel of salvation. The gospel of the kingdom is what's holding up Jesus' return is the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. And let me tell you what the gospel of salvation will do. Get people saved. Try to get them to live right. Get them to judge themselves. But the gospel of the kingdom 
I'll give you a pound. Y'all don't want to hear me up in here. Y'all don't want to hear me up. I say to give you power. Not to sit on that pew. You don't need no power to sit right there. It'll give you power to go out that door and move like you are net thrown by God in the sea of souls. Y'all better hear me up in here. The gospel of the kingdom. You can, I wouldn't miss a service around here right now. It's about to be some impartations. It's about to be some gifts release. It's about to be some assignments given. It's about to be some miracles happen. Not at this altar all the time. Under your hand. Y'all better hear me up in here. Under your hand. Listen, 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 listen. This gospel of the kingdom, I, I can't even get this out. This is just an introduction. This is just an introduction. Let me tell you what the Lord told me this morning. We're getting ready to shift what some folks sitting at. This next generation need to be up here closer to the front. The, 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 the kids, the, the, the kids, they, because see, some of us old dogs, we ain't going to get it. I'm just going to tell you, some of us just ain't going to want to change, ain't going to want to go. But see, Jesus say, if, 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 if you don't become as a little child, what will a child do? If a child see you casting out devils, somebody act like they got a devil, you know what that child going to do? Come out! Good God Almighty, y'all, come out in Jesus' name. That child don't have no fear. That child going to do what he see being done. You can give any of these kids a mic up in here right now. They've been seeing us preaching. They're going to know what to do. Praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? They see it. You got kids at your house right now. Say you got a headache. They're going to lay hands on you. Why? They're exposed to the gospel of the kingdom. They know God's a healer. God's, a, God's got power. But some of us, but not none of y'all, the people in church, who rallying around the gospel of salvation for 20 years, they're just trying to stay saved. Things have shifted. I don't know if y'all. Things have shifted. This gospel of the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 4.20, and I'm closing. You know what we experienced this morning? You know what Jesus said? The Bible said Jesus went. He started his ministry saying this, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know what we did this morning? Before we even started the service, we repented and we said the kingdom of God is at hand. We received the kingdom of God. You saw the difference that happened in here this morning? We repent. See, we repented. And we expect it, we receive, we entered into, we went after the kingdom of God. And when the kingdom of God comes on the scene, God's power, God's rule comes on the scene, and devils and situations and circumstances have to bow to that name. Let me give you one more little bit of tidbit. Wherever you go, the kingdom going to go with you. We're going to show you. We're going to teach you how to carry it. My God, I, I, I was almost gone. We're going to teach you how to carry the kingdom. We, we ain't gonna, we, we're not, see, salvation, the gospel of salvation teach you how to call the preacher. Y'all are, whoop. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. The gospel of salvation teach you how to call the preacher. The gospel of salvation will teach you how to pray God do it. But the gospel of the kingdom. I've given you power and authority. You tread over serpents and scorpions, over all the power. Of the you cast out devils. You speak with new tongues. You lay hands on the sick and they recover. Not the preacher. Y'all, I don't want to get. I don't want to get too deep in this. I won't take it too fast. I won't take it too fast. But if if y'all can stick with us six months, you you don't even know. Boy, you 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 talk about Clark Kent. You be running in phone boots all over Baton Rouge, coming out Supergirl, Superman. Some of you are going to be moving so deep and so hard and so strong, you don't even have time to put on your Clark Kent clothes. Going to be Superman, Superwoman at the job. Superman, Superwoman in the office. On the telephone, talking to your relative, the glory and power of God, going through the phone, healing them. All of a sudden, you're talking to them about Jesus, you hear the phone drop. They're out. God giving them an overhaul. Changing their lives right there over the phone. I'm telling you, shift has come to your life. I wish I could just download it all into you right now, but we can't because we don't want to choke you. But I'm trying to give you just a little taste of what God has for you.
1 Corinthians 4.20, I'm closing, you can get me some music. 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Well, that's all the time we have for today. You can order today's program in its entirety by calling the office at 225-274-3804. Pastor Virginia and I would like to invite you to our services. Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We are located at 12330 Florida Boulevard, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, next to All Star Nissan. Also visit our website at www.ffhm.net where you can get to know us better, watch live and archive services, and stay informed concerning upcoming events. If these programs have helped you, Help us help others by sowing an offering at the website. This is Pastor Thomas saying, allow God's word to transform you from a spectator into a participator. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Attention to all on the Gulf Coast and to those that are far and near. The time has come for the 2018 International Gulf Coast Word Convention, Wednesday, July 25th through Friday, July 27th. Be there live and in person to experience and be a part of this dynamic convention and convocation. A resounding thing is God is doing a new thing. This is an extraordinary event and you want to be there in the building to experience it live. Get ready to celebrate. Get ready to worship and get ready to receive an impartation of God's word that will cause your life to never be the same. Wednesday, July 25th is Men's Night and Dr. Henry Roberts Jr. will be our speaker. Thursday, July 26th is Women's Night and Dr. Robert C. Blakes of New Home Family Worship Center will be our speaker. July 27th is Youth and Family Night. Dr. Todd Hall of Shabbat Ministries House of Praise will be bringing a word from the Lord. Also, we're excited to present two powerful impact sessions. Thursday night at 6.30 with Bishop Harry Thomas and Friday night at 6.30 with Pastor John May. It's the 24th International Gulf Coast Word Convention, July 25th through July 27th. Nightly services beginning at 7 p.m. Impact sessions beginning at 6.30 p.m. Intercessory prayer from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Nightly prayer from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. This event is going to be soaked with God's presence and power. For more information, contact the Word of Life Community Church, area code 251-456-2652. Remember, God is doing a new thing, and we're excited about seeing you and your... The Bible teaches us to be content, never satisfied. Because when I get satisfied, I say, well, that's enough. We can get accustomed to robbing Peter to pay Paul. Living from week to week, paycheck to paycheck, you said it, with no increase, nothing extra. When I go eat dinner, I'm straining to eat dinner. It's something real special. Really, this about to upset the budget for 50 or 60 dollars. When John 10.10 10 said, I've come that you might have life and that life more. So that means you want to go out to dinner every night. That ain't a good idea. It's not good stewardship, but you ought to be able to. If your washing machine or your refrigerator breaks down, guess what? You ought to be able to go get another one, at least get it fixed without it upsetting your budget.
Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. I want to talk just a little while this morning. Now, I'm going somewhere because, you know, th these subjects have been coming up about tithing. Okay, people all on the internet, on the radio, on Facebook. A lot of times what, 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 what gets me is, is sometimes it's preachers. But it's kind of like what Prophet Hall said when he was here teaching, if you were with us, when he said, see, some of ain't been to school. So now before I get started in my text, write this down. There are three ways that you are supposed to interpret scripture. First way is just simply, literally. God does not need a mouthpiece. He does not need somebody to explain his intentions. He wrote what he meant and he meant what he said. So the first way when I look at my Bible is I'm supposed to just take it literally for what it says. And you, you know I'm the first one to admit even if it doesn't line up with my lifestyle or what I'm personally dealing with, it's going to be up to me to grow to the point where I yield and submit to the Word of God. So if everybody say literally. So that means I ain't got to guess. I don't have to try to figure it out. And guess what? What I love about the King James Version of the Bible, that's why I don't use too many of these new versions, it's written on the third grade level. So that means any and everybody can get an understanding. Quick understanding. See, God don't want this stuff to be difficult and too deep for us to understand. See, the second way is dispensational. Like in 8.30 service, I was able to cut out dispensation. But a dispensation, imagine in your mind when you learn math for the first thing. One of the first thing they showed you was a, t a, a line. And a t what do they call it? Number line. Number line, timeline, well, the line. And on this line, they have marks of demar areas of demarcation. One, two, three, four, five. Well, what a dispensation of time is, like you look up over here, each one of these blocks will represent a different dispensation, a different time period. So some things God may have said in the old covenant are not relevant now today in the new covenant. Like when he said, don't mix certain clothing. Don't wear wool with this, that, or the other. If you go in the old time, you see that. Well, you know why he said that? Let's just be logical. Those people lived in the desert. If you put on the wrong type of wool, right now, if you don't have on tropical wool, you will burn up. Amen. So it was for your benefit. The reason why he said don't eat pork back in the old country. They had no way of refrigerating and keeping that meat cool. You could go to Winn-Dixie right now, go get you a slab of salt meat, take that salt meat, slap it on a piece of wood, board, or something out there, and let it sit in that sun, and watch what happens. In a few hours, all kind of worms and stuff start coming up out. Well, God didn't want that going on on the inside of you. So he would tell him, don't you eat that. Well, how, how can you put that? Because when you move to the New Testament, God gives Peter a vision, he takes a, 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 a big sheet full of all manner of beasts, clean and unclean, and then, then, the, then the, the word of the Lord comes to Peter and says, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. And what does Peter say? Oh, no, Lord, I won't eat anything that's unclean. God said, Don't you call anything I have created unclean. So we know that was just for that dispensation. Now we can enjoy ribs, pig feet, if you like that kind of stuff, neck bones. Come on up here. Ain't nobody... What a black folk at? Glory to God. <laughs> Talking about soul food. Amen. Y'all trying to leave me out here like all y'all eat is chicken caught on blues. The devil is a lie. <laughs> then the third way is spiritually. What does God, what is he in the text speaking to my spirit? Not just, not just generally, because he does. Everybody say this, the Bible is God speaking to me See, about me so there are times when he does with individually and then there's times when the Bible is speaking corporately but most times when you're really reading you get intimate he, if you get there long enough he'll deal directly with you 
So there's the three ways you supposed to, when you open that Bible, supposed to look at it, read it, review it. So now, let's go to First Timothy. I want, I want to share some things. I'm going to be out of here in a few minutes. Because I, I need you to know and understand. I want First Timothy chapter 4. I want y'all to read for me verses 11 through 15. First Timothy chapter 4. We're going to read from verse 11 through 15. Y'all got it? All right, I'm going to let y'all read it, then I'm going to give you my points. Ready? Read. So stop, stop. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Point at me. Everybody point at me. Say, the pastor has a command to command and to teach. Did y'all hear those two words? Command and teach. Didn't tell me to preach. He told me to command. So there are some things that when I make a request of you are not my personal request. It was a command that came from the Bible. Now there's a difference between commands and demands. See, commands have to willfully be followed. See, that's why I don't understand. I was at service Friday and, and I was happy, but I was yet grieved. Because I watched the pastor come here and take up in less than 20 minutes. $20,000. Then we had to come week in, week out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just visiting. Just visiting. Then we had to come here week in, week out. And what he took up in 20 minutes might take us a whole month to take up. And the pastor here feeding you, praying for you, praying with you. You go to the hospital. If he don't come, he going to send somebody. And, and, and this your house. But here another person could just come. See, listen, I'm like this. How many of y'all really believe the Bible? Raise your hand. Don't fool me now. Don't fool. So that means, watch this. If my mother or my father, when he was home, would tell me, look, I need, I need that yard cut, and I want these dishes clean before I get home, I ain't had to get no spiritual understanding. I understood what the dispensation of that thing was. I got an eight-hour time period to get these personal goals and objectives accomplished. Ain't nobody up in here. If I don't accomplish these goals and objectives within this dispensation that was granted unto me, I could expect to receive whatever it was that my parents promised me I was going to receive. So now watch this. What were they teaching me way back then? Just how, you know, you're going to have to suffer some consequences in life. I can't understand how you, you can sit under good teacher. See the Bible. Say you believe the Bible. And then disobey the Bible. We, we should, if you got thousands of dollars to give, I can show you scripture where it say he's empowered the rich that we supposed to give more. No, I say we. I ain't rich like I want to be yet, but I'm, I'm decreeing, I'm declaring that we are responsible to carry the biggest of the load of ministry. You go, you might say, charge them that are rich. So you, you having money and not a soul, it, it don't help you or the kingdom and you walking in disobedience. Because God has on purpose made you rich so that when he has something in the earth realm, it never goes lacking. Oh, I ain't getting enough amens, but it's just the raw truth. But now let me ask this, how many of y'all want to be rich? Ooh, some folk ain't raised their hand. Okay, let, let me help you with something. That means if you do not desire more, let me ask you a question like this. How many of y'all already got enough? See, no, ain't nobody raised their hand. Yeah, okay, I should have came that way first. Because that means you have gotten complacent and satisfied where you are. When you get to the place that you don't want more and know you need more, you, 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 you're complacent and, and uh, you're really not trying to go no higher than where you already are because you've gotten satisfied. Now let me, let me help you with something. The Bible teaches us to be content, never satisfied because when I get satisfied, I say, well, that's enough. We can get accustomed to Rob and Peter to pay Paul. Living from week to week Paycheck to paycheck, you said it, with no increase, nothing extra. When I go eat dinner, I'm straining to eat dinner. 
is something real special. Really, this is about to upset the budget for fifty or sixty dollars. When John 10, 10 said, I've come that you might have life and that life more. So that means you want to go out to dinner every night. That ain't a good idea. It's not good stewardship, but you ought to be able to. If your washing machine or your refrigerator breaks down, guess what? You ought to be able to go get another one, at least get it fixed without it upsetting your budget. See, but this one, the last place we want to talk about all this stuff. And how I many you know the church or hospital? And God want me healed in every area. But the first area I'm going to have to get healed is in my mind. So write this down. The power of meditating on God's word. Now I'm watching my clo clock real close. All right, y'all got my text. We, we, we done laid the groundwork. Y'all understand already where we're coming from. All right, now what's the three ways we supposed to uh, 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 look at scripture? All right, y'all, a good class. One more time, how we supposed to look at it? So that means, don't you, from now on, don't you be going in the Old Testament and finding nothing, putting it over here in the New. Spiritually, I got to see what he's saying to me today. Where am I, prophetically speaking, with what pastor's saying? So dispensationally. And spiritually, now, prophetically, that's what we mean when sometimes we say prophetically. What is God saying to me right now? Now, you ain't got to look at me crazy because you know if this message is particularly for you. Because that's, that's the power in going to a teaching church or a rainbow church because God will take whatever I wrote down all week long, what I formulated, and in five minutes, ten minutes, say, no, don't you talk about that. I want you to go. He told me last night, take them to Matthew 23 and 23. But first, I want you to take them over here first. All right, now, come on. I'm going to try to shut up because I'm flowing, man. I'm telling you, I feel the annoying. Listen, I want you to go here. Let's read this text. Ready? So I have, see, I'm doing my job. So today I'm going to show you part of my job description so you'll quit getting confused what I'm supposed to be doing. Everybody know my job but me. So I'm, I'm going to go to the source. I'm going to get you where my job description comes from. So whenever anybody questions you or whatever goes on in church, you take them to this Bible. Okay, so first of all, y'all know, I have a command by the Apostle Paul as an under-shepherd under this ancient dispensation of apostolic succession to teach the same things they taught. All right, come on, let's read here. I'm going to try, I'm going to try. You know, I don't even have my Bible. All I got is my notebook. Come on. Y'all read. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I promise you, but it's just so good. Come on, teach. Read. <laughs> okay, now look at me. Look at me. When I started, I was real young. I have been doing this with, with ordained, not just licensed, but ordained since I was 23 years old. I am far from a novice. 23. I wrestled at 21 and 22. By the time I was 23, I had to do like Jacob. Say, you win. See, so the church 24 years old, but I was doing some of this before I got the mobile. All right? Keep reading. Keep reading. Uh-huh. Keep reading. All right, here we go. So notice something. Recognize God. First of all, we have a command to, 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 uh, to, to, to command and teach. So first of all, I want you to write this down. I need to be a resource. I need to become a resource. Yes, sir. That's right, Josh. I need to become a resource. That's you and I both. See, because you're going to meet more people than I ever meet. Some of them may not ever come through the door, but you'll see them in, in the grocery store on the job, at football practice, in the classroom, in the barbershop. So I need you, the Holy Spirit is saying to you, that it's to become a resource for me. Be able to spit out what I put in you. With no reservation, no reserve, with all confidence. I arrived to share yesterday. 
We, we, we were going trying to find this tower. I done passed by the spot two or three times. But see, I was in her car. I saw the road. But because I was in her car, it didn't have no, no sign on it, and I was in her car, and it had gravel all on the road, I knew I was going to have to go through a little something. <laughs> but I found the road. And she, I talked to some people, and she, when I got back in the car, she said, baby, you know what, sometimes people will come, you so confident, till people will confuse your confidence with arrogance. But let me tell you something, you need to be confident too. Because if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? It's not that you arrogant. You crazy to have invested time in school, institutions, private studies, courses, all kind of stuff to not believe in what's invested in you. See, I told you I'm just crazy enough to believe the Bible. And he said we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. So I realized that God has invested something in me. And then I rest, not in the confidence of who Henry is, but in who God is making me to become. See, God, I can't speak the sickness and expect it to move when I'm iffy in my spirit. See, I can't tell you when it's stripes you're going to be healed, and I, I don't really believe that. I'll be lying to you. You, and if you're trying, if the devil challenges you in your body, you don't need the man of God lying to you. When I release that thing on you, just like that, tell you you're going to be healed, whole, and everything's turning around. I mean just what I said. And I'm not going to take down from it. Now, if you want to call that arrogance, well, I guess I'm just arrogant. And another thing, yeah, I'm going to say, that's why a lot of times, just, just come and receive his word. Don't be trying to get all up on me. Because our personalities may not jail. See, and God didn't send you here for me and your personalities to jail. He sent you here for me to do for you what I'm doing right now. Am I, am I benefiting you right now? I can't hear you. If I ain't, I might well go on and take some of these calls that people keep giving me. Not, not for the pastor to be your best buddy, your friend. That, that's, wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune into life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network and there you will find our station for those of you who are in chickasaw or the surrounding areas you can tune in to us on 87.9 fm
You can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you, and I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter, and in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers, but most of the time we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron. So does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call. All you got to do is pray this prayer for me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you. And keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. 
Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. It's that time of year again. Get ready to be tremendously blessed. The 26th Annual International Gulf Coast Word Convention and Convocation of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries will be July 25th through the 27th. This year's theme is God is doing a new thing. There's an awesome lineup of speakers. Wednesday, July 25th is Men's Night. The speaker is convention host, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. Thursday, July 26th is Women's Night. The speaker is Dr. R.C. Blakes Jr. Friday, July 27th is Youth and Family Night. The speaker is Dr. Todd Hall Sr. We will also have daily intercessory prayer Wednesday through Friday. Noonday prayer is from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And nightly prayer is from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. But wait, there's more. Impact sessions will be held on Thursday and Friday starting at 6.30 p.m. each night. Our impact speakers are Bishop Wayne Johnson and Pastor John May. Bishop Johnson will discuss the faith needed to build ministry. Pastor May will talk about developing the faith to redefine your ministry. Mark your calendars and save the dates, July 25th through the 27th. For more information, contact Word of Life's office at 251-456-2652. Looking forward to seeing everyone at this year's convention and convocation. Hi, my name is Pastor Wayne Johnson, and we're here today, we're doing a teaching on the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I just want to welcome you to a word, a great teaching that we're going to expound and go into some scripture and kind of lay out a foundation that God wants to reveal himself to us in a different way. 
and we're here in Walnut Hill where our church is in Manager's Faith Center. And I just want, I want to say thanks for joining us today. And, and I'm excited about what God is doing in these last days. So let's dig into the Word of God. And so our foundational scriptures are going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start there. And also after that, we're going to go into um, uh, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when the church came. And also we're going to go also in Isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12. And then John 7 and 38, and then we'll end up in uh, Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. We, we may go a little bit different from those, but these are the foundational scriptures, and you can go back and you can look at them also. You know. And so here we are today, we're talking about the infilling of the Spirit. And so in the beginning, God you know, gave us his word. And chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians talking about the, the gifts of the Spirit. You know. And so I'm going to read uh, probably maybe down to the first 13 verses. And in, and in between that, I may stop and talk a little bit. And so here, here we go. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Not concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by what? The Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God, which what worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so, I want to break there. So, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, or the gifts of the Spirit. When we come into that place and the Spirit of God start moving, it's going to profit you. It's going to bless you. It's going to empower you to do some things and break some things and destroy some yokes in your life. So, so when we come to that place and we see the Spirit of God manifesting through prophecy, anytime the gifts of the Spirit in operation, we benefit. You know? And so, so, so here today, when we know that and we start looking for the plan and the perfect will of God to come forth in our life, it's just been a great blessing. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, and to by the same Spirit is important. And so it's not three Holy Spirits, it's only what? One Spirit. And so we, as we understand that, it's only one Spirit, but yet still omnipresent, um, all-knowing God. And, and so he can do, he can, he's multitasking millions of things all at the same time because what? He, he is the great and almighty God. And verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, and to another the working of miracles, uh, to the another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. And so I ask you a question. So if God can fill me with the spirit that I pray in tongues, which is one of the gifts of the spirit that's, that's listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so why shouldn't all the other gifts be allowed to be in the church, glory be to God, or be a uh, manifestation come. Because verse, verse 1 said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And so he said, he told us to desire these gifts, to crave these gifts, to pray and ask God for the gifts to be alive in the church, glory be to God. And so when we do that, we release our faith in the ability that when we pray that we know that our Heavenly Father has what hurt us. And so when we go to Matthew chapter 6, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer. And when we pray in secret, our Father who sees in secret will reward us what openly. And so we see that, 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 that the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful prayer when you go in and you see it. Now you begin to pray from that standpoint of understanding that when we ask God for something, he's not trying to withhold anything from us because we are his seed. We are, the, we are his children. We are the seed of Abraham. Him. And so God wants to empower us to be a blessing to our generation. Because when people are blessed by the gifts and by the power of the Holy Spirit, what's, what, what's, what's the results of it? They want to run toward God. They want to release and give their lives to Christ, glory be to God, that they can live what the abundant life that God what already promised his children. But then I, I begin to ask the question, why is it not given? Why is it so that, we, that some gifts are harder to walk in than others? And so that's my prayer to God, that, that the eyes of our understanding will become open, that we can understand how to receive the blessing of God. Salvation and, and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, and so, so power is in the blessings of the Lord. And so anytime the Lord told me he would profit me and increase me and bless me, glory to God, that means there's power in his word to do exactly what he said. And so my job is to believe what I read, 
not rationalize it, not try to say what if, or, and, and not understanding the full measure of what he's trying to relate to the church. And, and, and so when we put that if in there and we disqualify ourselves as being a recipient or, or the receiving the blessing of God, it calls us to stumble and fall. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here today that we know that it's the self same spirit, one spirit. And, and, and so we have so many spirits that's trying to gain access to our lives, but they don't, but they are disembodied spirits. They're not what here legally, so therefore they're trying to gain access to our lives and to all that we have, you know. And so we, we, we disfranchise ourselves. We, we, we push them aside in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so hereby we know that, that we have access with God because it, it's by the Holy Spirit. It's only one. 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 One, one, one. And so here we are. Let me go back to verse 11. But all these work of that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And they call him in the Greek, Alos Paracletus. I, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, you know. And so he's our advocate, he's our helper, he's our standby, he's our intercessor. And, jo and John was said this when, when he had his earthly ministry. He said, there's one standing among you now, shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus Baptizer is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes to give us utterance and unctions in the Spirit. So when he comes upon us, he comes to what fill this, this temple or this void on the inside. And the Bible said, out of our belly shall for what rivers of living water. And so this process is given by faith when you want Jesus to come into your life and let him be Lord of your life. And as you surrender and as you pray and ask God for his blessing to come into your life, he won't withhold none of these gifts because they're gifts. And if I have a gift, if I want to give you a gift, it's up to you to receive the gift. See, the gift giver is always given, but, but the person that received the gift, he has option. He can what, choose to receive it or reject it. And so a lot of times, and so sometimes we, we, somebody give us a nice gift, oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, uh, I, I didn't think I was worthy enough to receive the gift. But, but God's opinion of us is that we are what? We're, 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 we're highly favored. And he, he put us on a pedestal because what? Jesus died and suffered and went through so many things on the cross that we can receive the blessings or the gifts or the power and enter into a rest in this time and season that we live in in our life. And so the Bible said we're not destroyed because of the devil. We're destroyed because of the lack of knowledge and insight into his word, Hosea 4 and 6. And so the time that we spend in this word, understanding and receiving and believing God and trusting him. See, patience means when you got to have patience. You know, I, you know, I didn't really understand patience. Patience is when you're standing on God's word and something is trying to move you off the foundation of his word that you're standing on. You need patience or endurance to keep the same mindset and believe God and trust him through that what pressure time that the enemy is placing on your life to move you off your foundational faith. And so praying in the spirit strengthen us in these weak moments that we are going through in life. That's why we need to be what filled with the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah to Jesus, because you know you're in conflict, you're in a spiritual warfare, you're in a spiritual battle, and as God has gifted the church with one of the greatest gifts that we can, if we do not break down, if we begin to understand that God has given us a weapon of warfare with our tongue by praying in the Holy Ghost, glory to God. Handro sikorabasika. Many people fight us on this thing a bit of the, of the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's a spiritual weapon. It's a weapon that God has given to the church, but if we don't understand how to use our weapons, we go into battle with, what, with carnal weapons against a spiritual enemy, and we are sometimes defeated, glory be to God. But when we understand that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, is spiritual, is kingdom, is, is binding by God's word that he gives us a spiritual language, that we have the power to communicate with our Heavenly Father, and we speak in an angelic tongue as well. The Bible says, though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels, angels and have not what charity that's why the enemy knows that if we are the strong man and we have power in the name of Jesus glory be to God oh Lord have mercy glory be to God see because it's by one spirit and so let, let me let me let me break off and talk about the strong man part because this is vitally important to what we understand so God created Adam from the dust of the ground correct all right so he blew his life or his zoe or his life created in the image of God. 
And God gave him power and dominion over all the works of his hand. So basically you say Adam was the God of this world. Does that make sense? Do you agree with me on, on that concept? And so here we are now, you know, Satan rebels against God, kicked out of heaven, him and the third of the angel. And so he find himself in the earth where Adam is what? The strong man or have what? He's the God of this world, Adam, with dominion and power and authority. So Satan has no, he lost his place. So now he subdued the serpent and what gets in the serpent and goes to Eve. But yet still he plotted probably a long time on how he would get what he wanted from Adam. And so here you are, he goes, talks to Eve and, and said, has God said? So he began to put doubt in her mind about what God said because hallelujah, glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here he is, he tricks her. And Adam is not deceived, but he willfully give his dominion and power and authority over to Satan. And now Satan becomes the God of what? This world. Glory to God. He becomes the strong man. And so here we are, Adam, strong man first, transferred to Satan. And now Jesus Christ comes. They call him the last Adam. Oh, you don't hear me. Glory be to God. And God fills him with or baptizes him in the spirit of the river of Jordan. And the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And God makes a decree. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And so for a long time as I was a preacher, I thought he was just speaking to the people that were at the baptism. But no, he was speaking to all the creation that he made. And he was telling them, he was telling the rocks, he was telling the wave, the sea, the wind, the fig tree, sickness and disease, Satan and every angel and everything that he ever made. Glory be to God. He was telling them and making a decree to them that the, these things that had, not, that, 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 they understood the voice of God. He was saying and making a decree. This is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And so when he made that decree, everything had to obey the creator. Glory be to God. And so we see sickness had to obey. We see demons. We see fig trees. We see everything that physically Jesus spoke to. Physically, hallelujah, glory be to God. Physical things that he spoke to, hallelujah. Human things that he spoke to. Environmental things that he spoke to. Everything that he spoke to. Even death, when he spoke to death, death had to obey him. And so, therefore, God's decree and God's word was so found, so profound that what all creation had to obey him. And that's why God give us these things, what we call working or flowing in the realm of the spirit. And so much carnality has entered into the church. Hallelujah, glory to God. We need to return back to the foundation that God has said, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, does that make sense? And so here we are today. We are understanding that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is spiritual. It's a pure language. It's not defiled like our language. It, when you pray in the spirit, it's no, it's no cursing in that language because it's a pure language given by God to his people. So every other earthly language that man has a part in, it has curse word. It has things that you can say that, that's, that's not a pure language, glory to God. So rambo korabaka. And so therefore God's language is given by the spirit. And when we pray in it, it profits me. It blesses me. But yet and still, sometimes because the mind does not what understand what's going on and it's trying to figure out and trying to understand. So we form an opinion about what God is trying to do in my life. And therefore, sometimes it, it, it interferes and hinders the blessings or the flow of God in my life. Does that make sense? And so God is saying in verse 11, going back to 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 11, he said, but all these work of that what one and self-same spirit divided into every man severally as he will. So these things are divided unto us by what? The Holy Spirit. And so if the Holy Spirit is, is the one that gives and, and imparts these gifts, so who should I ask? I should ask him about what doing the impossible in my life. And so here we are today, you know, we, we, we just got into a short version of this, of this message, but we're going to have part two, part three, and, and maybe part four going into it. Stay tuned for part two of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit with the Emmanuel's Faith Center, and I'm Pastor Wayne Johnson. My name is Pastor Wayne Johnson. Welcome to the sec second segment of our teaching, the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the baptism 
or praying in the Spirit. And so we're excited today to take you into the, the, the second part of it where we begin to talk about the principles of God's Word, empowering us to do what we can't do. Because when we understand who we are and we know that God is with us, we make a decree on the promises and the prophetic word that the Holy Spirit is the one that what comes to energize or stir up the gifts of the Spirit. And we talked about in the last segment, we talked about that we are the strong men. And so if you do not understand this principle about being the strong man, so when attacks of the enemy come, you'll, you'll start looking at yourself as the weaker one rather than what the strong man. And so when we go there and we, we look at Matthew chapter 12, I believe that that's, that's where that comes from, glory be to God. When we look at, at the principles of God's word, that we are the strong men and women of God. And so now the enemy, Satan, Jesus operated on the, the law. And so from Genesis to, to, to John was the law. And after the resurrection, after he rose again, then that's when we, we, we go back when he rose again in 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And he told them to go and tarry to Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. And so when Satan found out that we all going to be millions and billions of people being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that, 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 that rose, that, that pulled Jesus and, and, and rose and, and brought him back to life, hallelujah, when he was in that dead state, glory be to God, that same Holy Spirit now is inside of us, empowering us, giving us the, the, the wisdom, the strength, and the knowledge and the ability to do exactly what Jesus did. Lord, have mercy to Jesus. Do, oh, does that make sense? So when we understand this principle, we got to understand who we are. So now, my concept is that if I am less than Satan, well then, therefore, sometimes my thinking is I cannot overpower someone that's stronger than me. It's like a bully. Most people that bully you, they, are, they think they have strong, they, 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 the contents of their character, it, it, it makes you what feel less than. But Lord, have mercy to Jesus. Let, let me go back, because I want to lay this down to you. The scripture said, how can you enter into a strong man's house and bind him except you be what stronger than him? I'm paraphrasing, glory to God. And so therefore, Jesus Christ became what? The strong man. Everything that God made obeyed the voice of Jesus Christ. Because, Lord have mercy. Ooh, I feel good today. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and, and so when we go to uh, Matthew chapter 12 and starting at verse 9, when he departed hence, he went into the synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had what, a withered hand. And he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might what, accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that have one shepherd, one sheep, and if he fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much more then? How much more then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore is it lawful to do what well on the Sabbath day? Then said the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was what restored whole like unto what to the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and what a great multitude what followed him, and he healed them all. Now, in this context, later on down, we see where 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 they they uh, they talked about in verse twenty eight. He said, "But this is what they said." And uh, let me go let me go right here. Let me go to verse twenty four. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "This fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils." And Jesus knew their what thoughts. Now, let me show you something. That's very important when you're reading scripture. He said he knew their thoughts. So whatever thing you are thinking about, whatever thing you let have access in your thought life, it dominates the, 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 the place and the place that you're trying to go in life. Because your thoughts reveal what, what's really on the inside. Glory be to God. Because the scriptures say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So here we are. Jesus knows our thoughts, even the words we're going to say before we even say them. Glory be to God. So this is vitally important when you, when you go there. And he said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to what? Desolation. So when you become the strong man, and we became the strong man when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Now, 
the thing switch. Now the enemy is trying to spoil our house, trying to get us not to see that we are the strong men and women that God has anointed with his spirit and with his power. Glory be to God. We have been restored back to that rightful place when God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Uh, does that make sense? Do you, do, do you feel me? Do, do you begin to understand? Now, when I get that concept and that concept is inside of me, then my, 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 my imagine, my image of myself now turns to what God said rather than what I feel and what I sense. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? Because see, when you're sensing wrong, perception and truth are totally two different things. You can perceive something to be true and it's not true. See, because most people live from a place of perception. What they think determines where they go in life. Glory be to God. And, and perception can be wrong and not what related to truth with God's word. So when you think that you can't do anything, let, let, let me break it down like this. Sometimes when Christians say his name and, and they make that decree out of their mouth, something from down here rises up and resists that which is coming out of their mouth. And, and I, can, I can give you an illustration if you follow me. If you make this decree right here, you say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. And when you make that decree and you begin to say that out of your mouth, instantly with 99% with with of the people that say that, you'll feel something from your lower belly or your inner man rise up and resist that word that just came out of your mouth. That's a faith confession. That's what God said. My barrel and barrel will never go empty. I'll never be broke another day in my life. God will supply and sustain me in every area of my life. When you make those faith confessions, then that thing comes up and rises up against you to what reject what just came out of your mouth. That's your core belief. That's what you really believe. And that's why the word of God tells us to renew our mind. And, and when we renew our mind with the word, it, it, it delinquishes that voice. And that voice no longer rises up against us when we're starting to decree God's word. And therefore, a lot of people, when they say the name and they make a decree about Satan, and, and so therefore that thing rises up inside of them, and, 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 and sometimes they get afraid. But I want to let you know today, God's word is true. You've got to settle that in your mind. If it's true and, and the weapon that he's given, given us is, is the sword of the spirit, is the gifts of the spirit, or the Holy Spirit coming to live on the inside of us, manifesting himself through us in a lot of ways by praying in the spirit and delivering and that we speak mysteries unto God, that we are created in the image of God and we walk and we do kingdom blessings and kingdom work. We communicate with a pure language unto God. And therefore, that language of the spirit is given, it's, it's a blessing, it's a gift of God. And so therefore, when my heavenly father has gifted me with some Something, I cherish it with, 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 with unconditional gloves, our hands of gloves, glory be to God, because I understand that he's given me something, and sometimes you can receive something from your father or from our, and you don't even realize the value of what we have, glory to God. And so here we are today, and Jesus is what? Fighting against demonic powers through men, because the scriptures say our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high places. So now, let's go back to Matthew 12, and let me begin to explain about this what position of authority and dominion that God has given us, and now we are what the strong men. So we talked about earlier, the old covenant from Genesis to John, right? And Jesus operated under the old covenant when he was here. And the New Testament came, what, after he died and rose the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Glory be to God. So therefore, now he came back, 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And after that, they all met 500 brethren. And he said, go and tear in Jerusalem till you be endued with what power from on high. Glory be to God. And so here we are. Jesus is setting a principle and his word, and he's showing us something if we can what, see this. And listen to what he said. And they, and they were saying some things about Jesus, and the Bible said he what, knew their thoughts in verse 25. And every kingdom, and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided itself shall what, not stand. And the Bible says, that's, that's powerful within itself. I'm going to come back to it. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? So we pray the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. 
So here we are, kingdom principles are coming to the church through by what mysteries are praying in the spirit. So God said, we speak mysteries unto God. I pray with the spirit, I pray with the understanding. I sing with the spirit, I sing with the understanding. So though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, it what profit us nothing. So here we are that we have an opportunity to what see into the kingdom. Lord, have mercy to Jesus. The mysteries of the kingdom are now revealed unto the children of God when we know and go after kingdom blessings and kingdom principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That when, when I know who I am in Christ, when I know that God has given me power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing and no wise shall what hurt or harm us. That's what God said. And so now we, 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 we know that, that, that thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, hold on. I'm going to show you something. Listen to what it said. And, and verse 26, I read that. And, and verse 27. If I, he said, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Verse 28, listen to this. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. We pray that Lord's Prayer all the time. Jesus said, if I'm casting out devils by what? The finger of God, the kingdom of God has come unto you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray that all the time. Glory be to God. And listen to verse 29. Or else how can one enter into a, enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man, then he will what, spoil his house. Glory to God. So we are the people that God called and commissioned us to do. And that's why praying in the spirit is so vitally important. It's a weapon that God has given to the church. So when you go to Ephesians chapter 6, he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. But at the last part, he said, praying always with all prayer in the spirit, you know, petition and supplication unto God, that we speak what mysteries unto God. So when you pray in the spirit, the spirit of God, hallelujah, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, so the gifts of the spirit are the power of the Holy Spirit. This has been the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. If this broadcast was a blessing to you, we would like for you to partner with us. You can partner with us with the monthly seed of $25. We are located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. For this and other teachings by Pastor Johnson, please visit our website at www.efcenter.org. Tune in next week for another exciting time in the Word of God. And may God continue to richly bless your lives is our prayer. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. Out of your born again spirit come the forces of life. Yes. The, the life force is in there. The life force of God is in there. Amen. So protect it. tolerated is faith contaminated. Join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland today as they teach us how to build strong faith. Double your daily dose of the Word of God next on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Now here are Kenneth and Gloria. Hello everybody. Welcome to Southwest Arkansas and the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. This is Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. We're really glad you're here. Yes, Let's have a word of prayer. We get right into our healing scripture Pray. lesson today. I said that very slowly. I want, you to, I want you to be prepared. I want you to be thinking about it as we pray. Healing belongs to you. Jesus bought and paid for it 2,000 years ago. Grace provided it. Faith takes it. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah, that's Woo, that'll good. preach right there, won't yeah, it? In fact, that's that what I'm going to preach. <laughs> Lord, oh, Lord, we thank you and praise you that we're healed. We thank you and praise you that we're saved. 
We thank you and praise you that you baptized us with the Holy Ghost. We thank you and praise you. We have a supernatural means right. of communicating with you in other tongues. I pray, whoa, glory be it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody just got healed of a bad valve in your heart. Praise God. Okay, glory. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the healing word of God. And we receive healing all throughout this radio and television audience today. In Jesus' name, and we give praise and honor and glory to you, Lord yes. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles once again to Proverbs chapter 4. This is the healing prescription. I heard Gloria say one time, Now, if you take this three times a day... <laughs> And, um, and and you and you, uh, you you still got the symptoms, double the dose. That's right. <laughs> you can't overdose on no, this one. Can't. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse twenty. That's my right. son, attend to my words. Now again today, I want us to notice that in receiving anything from God. It always begins with the word and winds up with our words. Our words must match God's word. Amen. Or our words will nullify the life power in God's word. Amen. It will contaminate it with doubt and unbelief yes. or fear. You remember when... Uh, Jairus, uh, they were, Jesus and Jairus were headed towards his house. And right on the way, someone from his house came and said, your little daughter has died, so, you know, it's over. Don't bother. Trouble the master. Don't huh? trouble the master anymore. But Jesus was the one that answered. Now, listen how he answered. In all of the different things he could have said, he could have said, now hold, hold fast to your faith now. Be strong in your faith. What did he deal with? He dealt with fear. He said, fear not. Fear not. Or, or literally, stop the fear. Believe only. She will be made whole. Now, you can, you can apply that to you today. Stop the fear. Believe only. You will be made whole. It is impossible to walk in faith and fear at the same time. Yeah. You can't do that. I, I was preaching, and, and uh, this many years ago, on, on that from the eighth chapter of the book of Luke, and uh, where he said, fear not, believe only, she'll be made whole. Yeah. And it just came out of my mouth. I was just, just prophetically, fear tolerated is faith yeah. contaminated. Good. It'll weaken you. It, it'll it'll weaken your faith. Can't walk walk into those two things at one time. Not the same time. Mm -mm. Well, how do I get rid of it? You don't. <laughs> All right, you brought it up. I brought it up. I'm a first Corin uh, first John four sixteen says perfected or developed love casteth out fear. Faith worketh by love. So love filled faith casts out fear. You're the one that has to wield the sword. But you're not the one that has to do it. It's the power of the love of God and the power of the faith of Jesus and the power in his mighty name, faith in that name. Whoa, I'm telling you, it'll stop fear in, in its tracks. You may be standing there with your knees knocking and you're still saying like Kelly did that night when they told her Lindsay wasn't going to live through the night. She said, she said, Daddy, it came down on me like a black, dark shroud and it was, it was fearsome and heavy. She walked over to her sister, looked her in the face, and said, I refuse to fear. 
And the moment she said it, she said, Daddy, that thing was so weak. She said it just left like a bird flying out of the room. And Lindsay was healed before daylight. Still going strong. Still going strong. Amen. Amen. I just married her and, and her husband just uh, just a few months ago. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Glory the to God. The word is a marvelous thing. Oh, it's a marvelous, marvelous thing. thing. Now then, glory to God. My son, attend to my words. Yeah. Put it first place. Put it final authority. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Why? Because Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh. Yeah, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Faith cometh. Well, now, you see, Brother Copeland, that's my trouble. I just don't have any faith. Well, the answer to that is to get born again. Oh, I am born again. Yeah, I mean, well, then you have faith. Faith is not detected by feelings. Faith is a spiritual force. If you're born again, that's the way you got born again. Amen. Romans, the second chapter. We are saved by grace through faith. Amen. It's been there all the time. So big, put a big smile on you say, faith. I have faith, and I say it's strong. Glory to God. Amen. Now then. Now read, before you get away from that, in the light of what you just said, read verse 20 and through 23, Proverbs. Four. Yeah. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life. Mm -hmm. It's the life of God in yes, his word, isn't that's it? That's right. They're life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now, that Hebrew word over my cross-reference says medicine. Medicine. Now, this is what Gloria was talking about, take your medicine. That's right. And, and, right. and she said, she said, uh, your, your uh, prescription's sitting there next to the bed, hmm. and, you, and, and you go back to the doctor, and uh, you haven't improved a bit. Did you have that prescription filled I gave you? Oh, yeah, it's sitting right there next to my bed. <laughs> That's right. Have you been taking it? Well, no, I pick it up and read it every night. <laughs> You can have your Bible laying there, too, and just die yeah, sick. Yeah. You can have your Bible lay there and die unsaved. Die dead. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Because not appropriating by faith. Yeah. Now, that 23rd verse. That's, this is how you do it right here. Keep your heart with all diligence. Diligence has to be played in here. In other words, you do it every day. That's right. You have to do it every day. That's right. Out of it, out of your heart, out of your spirit, man, the born again part of you, out of that, out of your born again spirit come the forces of life. Yes. The, the life force is in there. The life force of God is in mm -hmm. there. Amen. So protect it. Don't feed a bunch of trash in there. Don't feed a bunch of unbelief and, and, and fear. Don't feed yourself fear. Let me say something more about fear. The unborn again spirit uh, in, in, in every human being that's not born again is a fountain of fear because fear was what was originally Adam's faith and when he committed high treason towards God, everything about him went 180 degrees the other way. So his faith became fear. Now. When you got born again, it went back the other way. You were made a new creation, a new creature. Say, I am a new creature. I am a new creature. In Christ. In Christ. Old things have become, uh, become new. Old things passed away. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. All things have become new. And all things are of God. And all things are of God. Now, that's what happened to you when you got born. Now, if you don't think so, that makes a difference, oh, you're just mistaken. Oh, Woo, oh yes. Yeah,
everything it changes. changes everything. Yeah. Now, out of your out of your spirit, there's a fountain of faith. So how do you get fear in there with this weapon right here? That thing. <laughs> you start talking fear. Well, don't that just thrill you to death? Well, oh, are you going? Are you going down there tomorrow? I'm afraid not. <laughs> Is it what's going to happen? Well, I'm afraid so. Using fear and death to express yourself, or something like well, nothing. Something like nothing ever works out for me. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, there's just so many things like that people say. You know, I guess I'll just go on home. If a train don't hit me, <laughs> that's stupid. Yeah, it is. Well, now, it's Brother dangerous. Copeland, I didn't mean anything by it. Yeah, tell the devil that. He's a legalist. He'll whip you with a dictionary. He'll accuse you before God and make it stick. If you but, believe it. I'm telling you. But you can stop all that. Yeah. How? <laughs> Quit what you've been saying. Put the word in put your mouth. Put the word in your mouth. Put it in your eyes and your ears and your mouth. Hey, just what he said here. And protect your heart with all diligence. For out of your spirit man come the very forces of life. Christ Hallelujah. God. Now, let's go over to the book of Acts. And let's look at a perfect example of this. 14th chapter of the book of Acts. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Hmm. Long time, therefore, they bode speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also the Jews and their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there, now notice the seventh verse, there they preached the gospel. Now remember, Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing, yes. and hearing by the word of God. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak. What did he hear him speak? The gospel. Well, now, we, we don't know. Uh, the Holy Spirit didn't see fit to give us uh, the message that he preached. But I can tell you pretty close because I know what he wrote. Yeah. And we know it was good news because it was the gospel. And it was healing news. Yeah. It was yeah. miracle news. I expect he's teaching that we've been redeemed from the curse. That's what he wrote to the church of Philippi. He's, he's teaching um, the power of in the name of Jesus. That Jesus bore the curse because they knew what the curse was. And so he's, he, he's, he's, he's preaching what he's written. Amen. Now listen. The same heard, let me put it, let me put it like this. The same heard Paul preach the gospel who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, where did the faith came from? 
So faith cometh by hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing by the Word of God. So he had to be preaching faith. He had to be preaching healing. He had to be preaching miracles for the man to have faith in it. Sure. He had to hear it to have faith in it. And he believed it. He took it. And, the, uh, and by the Spirit of God, now that was the word of knowledge. See, he perceived, the gift of the word of knowledge operating here, he perceived that the man had faith to be healed. Steadfastly beholding him. Boy, I, now I, I've had this happen to me. Right in the middle uh, of a service, the Lord will just point somebody out to you. I, I've, I've seen this at times I'll be preaching, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I move all over the place when I'm preaching. And, and I'll, I'll spot somebody there, but as I, as I go, my eye just keeps falling on that person. And when that happens, it, it begins to, it, 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 I, I begin to see that there's something going on there. And, and, and sure enough, uh, more times than not, the, the Lord will have something to say, or, or it'll be, it's the Spirit of God leading me to that person. Well, that's what happened here. Now, notice, notice how it happened. And the Apostle Paul said with a loud voice, Stand upright on their feet. And he leaped and walked. That's the first time the man ever, <laughs> ever stood up on his feet. You know, no one... Much less leaped and walked. Knowing how those words of knowledge work, that man jumped on his feet before he knew anything. <laughs> yeah, he, was he didn't there. have time to say, I can't, can't you see, oh, I can't walk. Uh -uh. What would have happened if he did? He wouldn't have done he it. Wouldn't have he wouldn't have gotten it. He wouldn't have gotten it. No. Um, yeah, but now, hey, what I wanted you to see, nobody laid hands on that man. No. Nobody. Um, That's right. No, nobody touched him. It was his own faith that came by hearing and hearing by the word. That's right. That's a good point. And he took it. He just jumped and obeyed. Glory. He was ready. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. There's something else that happens. I've noticed this where you can see it in people's eyes. Um, you're, you'd be, and you know, and I'll be moving around, and particularly the bunch that usually sits on the front row, because sometimes those front row seats are not easy to get. And, and they, whoa, they're down there. And, uh, and, and the ones on the front row are, are usually... Serious. They're serious, <laughs> and, and they came to get it. But I've, and I've, I've watched them before, and, and there's just, I, it's, I, I don't know how to explain it, but when I'm operating in the Spirit and, and they step over there in the Spirit, there's something that... Connects? Yeah, and some, sometimes it's a, it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a glow that comes. And the Apostle Paul saw that on that man, and he knew he was ready to run, brother. <laughs> so he said it, and up he got. Now... Remember, they came to hear him and be healed. Isn't that good? Luke chapter 5. Look at where he got that. It's so plain here. It, it said, he being a cripple from his mother's womb, uh, who never had walked the same herd. Yeah. Paul speak. He heard him, and it brought faith. And he jumped up and took Yeah, he heard. Yeah. He could have sat there the whole time and never heard anything. Thought about tomorrow's lunch. Yeah, and the fact that he can't walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or that's he could good, have, boy. He, he could have, people just get in unbelief, and they say, oh, well, yeah, right. I've been this way for 10 years and all my life or whatever. That's, there's nothing to that. Well, what would have happened? Nothing. Well, if he just sat there and heard what he's preaching there and, and he thought, well, uh, you know, he don't know me. Yeah. But, you know, I've never walked. Yeah, he doesn't know. I, I, I've never walked. 
And, um, yeah, and, you know, and, and, but just sit there in his mind. I'll tell you one thing that happened. He spoke in a loud voice yeah. to that man, and that man was on his feet before, I think, before he had time to think about it. Well, now you go back. Because it was power, it was anointed, and boom. We go back to the law of attention Yeah. that you talked about um, yesterday, mentioned it the day before, from uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Attend to my word. This guy was like this. Man, he was hung on every word. I mean, it could have, lightning could have struck outside and he never would have known it. He's just locked in there. I remember, Gloria, back when we first went to Oral Roberts University, we first went to Tulsa, that uh, I was acquainted with uh, total immersion I, I was I was very interested in, in, Spanish, in languages and, and spe language. especially Spanish. Mm -hmm. And uh, during World War II, they, there was a language school in Monterey, California, and they needed translators, and they couldn't they 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 needed to train people because they didn't know who they could trust during the war. And they had in a, that school, you weren't allowed to speak English at all. Mm. And within, within four, five, six, eight weeks, you were fluent, and, in, and you made a translator out of you in a year. My goodness. Total immersion. Yeah. We're out of time. Really? Gloria and I'll be back in just a moment. A life of total health is available to you. Do you know how to access it? With the Healing Promises book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, you can discover how to tap into God's healing power to overcome any sickness or disease. Kenneth and Gloria have compiled scripture after scripture of God's healing promises to you, each one shown in four different translations. The King James Version, Amplified Bible Classic Edition, James Moffat Translation, and the New English Bible. Use it like a medicine cabinet and take your scripture daily. Healing is a promise to people of all ages. It's God's will for you to be healed right now. Make it your personal project to be well. Handwrite the verses out. Get them in your heart and speak them over yourself. Take God at his word. See yourself through the eyes of faith, healed and whole and strong. Healing Promises, a hands-on healing resource manual to help you live in divine health through the power of God's word. Discover how to tap into God's healing power. Request your free copy of Healing Promises from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. This hands-on healing manual gives practical application of God's word for healing. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Now, you can do this same thing w with the healing promises, all four of those translations. You can, you can fasten your attention. Back there when we first went to Tulsa, I learned that I could fasten my attention on Brother Roberts as he's preaching. I could fasten my attention to Brother Hagin when he's teaching and preaching. And all kinds of things were going on inside me while it's going on. I wasn't sitting there wondering. What. But you have to make a decision to do it. I'm not going to let anything divide my attention in the Word of God in this service tonight. And I get into this healing book, and I get in here, and I read this, and I read this, and I set my certain time of day when I, when I feed myself the healing out of this book. Well, think about Proverbs 4.20. That's what it says. That's what it says. Attend to the Word. That's what it not says. Not something else. And Gloria and I want to sow this thing into your life. So go to kcm.org and, and request it. Praise God. Hey, no expense, no excuse. Keith Moore's book, God's Will to Heal. It's also free. Go to his website and download it, morelife.org. Praise God. Oh, glory. <laughs> Father, we pray Praise for our partners. We pray for everybody in the sound of our voice on this radio and television broadcast. It, we, we just, oh, we receive together with them today. We receive their healings together. Receive it. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 
lay you. If I was there, I'd lay my hands on you. The believer lay hands on the sick. You a believer, lay hands on yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We got a prayer department. We got trained people on those telephones, prayer ministers on staff. If you need prayer, call the prayer line. Get in agreement with yes. someone who will believe God with you and stay in the realm of faith because faith is the victory that overcometh the world. Somebody shout amen. Somebody amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, oh, lie. Ah, hallelujah. Praise God. That, that, that heart thing's come, come back again. That there's, there's healing for hearts right now, particularly some, anybody that has a, a, a malfunctioning heart valve or a hole in your heart, a weak heart. Right. Receive your healing yeah. right now. Thank you. This is Kenneth and Gloria. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember that Jesus is Lord. Visit our website, kcm.org, to watch the broadcast or download the study notes free. You can also request a free copy of the broadcast on DVD, CD, or digital download. Shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Keep your faith strong in the Word and expect to see the manifestations of the Holy Ghost and fire. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. June 27th through 29th, this summer, join Kenneth Copeland on the Mountain at Eagle Mountain International Church in Newark, Texas. July 12th through 14th, come to the South Pacific Victory Campaign in Honiara on Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands. July 30th through August 4th, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention at the Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. We got wisdom that needs to be drawn out. You're walking around to, with answers to your everyday problems. You're walking around with answers for the world. You're walking around with ideas and concepts and witty inventions that's been hidden for you. And speaking in tongues draws it out. Do you understand who you are? There's no way you should be losing anywhere. <laughs> the treasure is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Treasure in these earthen vessels. Praise God. Sit down at the table and eat from this revelation of God's unmerited favor and love. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. God is working in you. I guarantee you there is joy in your heart. Your success is waiting on the heels of your thankfulness. Join us for the Grace Life Conference, July 9th through the 13th in College Park, Georgia. Register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org or text Grace TV 2018 to 51555. I'm a world changer. This is Changing Your World with Creflo Dollar. Now, from the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, here's Pastor Dollar with today's message. Let's go to, um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4. Um, let's look at that before I look at some other things here. Thank you, Jesus. I taught earlier that the born-again experience and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. And the Bible was playing with that. You see that over and over again in the book of Acts. One experience of getting born again, the other experience is being filled with the Holy Spirit. And yet, the, and Acts also talks about the baptism in water as well. Now, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Um, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, four, yeah, 14. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. Speaking in tongues will bypass the unbelief that is in your, your brain and allow you to talk directly to God. 
it bypasses the unbelief in your brain. If some of y'all knew what you were talking, it might scare you. And I thank God for that. Because I pray in the Holy Ghost, I might be praying about something. And if I knew what I was praying about, I, I probably, I stopped. And um, the scripture says in verse 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue um, speaketh uh, not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaks what? In, he speaks mysteries. Now look at this in the Amplified. So he's, he's describing when I speak in tongues, what, what's actually going on? What's, what's the dynamics that we look at here? In the Amplified Bible, he says this, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. Now, I, I told you the difference between when I am speaking to a man, I need to do it where you can understand what's being said or you won't be edified or built up. I'll be like a barbarian to you if I'm coming to you. Imagine if I came on a pulpit and I, pulpit and I said, Eddie la crato, and you don't understand what I said unless somebody who was in here understood that language. He said, now, um, but we're speaking to God unless it's a gift that needs an interpretation. There's a whole lot you have to put in there to make sure you're getting the whole thing. But you're speaking to God for no one understands or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit, he utters secret truths and hidden things. Whew. Think on that. When you speak in tongues, you don't know what you're saying, but you know what you're saying. Does that make, you, you get that? You don't know what you're saying as far as the interpretation of the tongue, but you know you're uttering a secret truth. When you speak in tongues, you know you're uttering a secret truth. I don't know what I said, but I know I just uttered a secret truth. And then the Bible talks about, and go ahead, it's all right to pray that you may interpret. Lord, what, what did I say? Give me the interpretation of what I said. So I know that I'm speaking a secret truth. I know I'm speaking a hidden thing. That's revelation. A hidden thing, not from us, but for us. Knowledge that's been hidden, not from us, glory to God, but for us. Knowledge that's been hidden, not from us, but what? But for us. Let me, let me share this scripture with you. In Proverbs 18 and 4, he says, The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Now look how this is described. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of the wisdom as a flowing brook. Now look what he says in Proverbs 20 and 5, because this is what I believe happens as a result of you speaking in tongues. Proverbs 20 and, and 5. It's like a well, but like a well, you got to draw it out, right? Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. See, I believe they're, they're deep, hidden secrets about life that's been hidden for you. But I also believe that speaking in tongues draws it out. It's like a bucket that draws it out. A man can be leaning against a water well um, all day long and be thirsty, but until he knows how to stick the bucket and dip it in to draw some water out and partake of it, well, that's what I'm saying. We got wisdom that needs to be drawn out. You're walking around to, with answers to your everyday problems. You're walking around with answers for the world. You're walking around with ideas and concepts and witty inventions that's been hidden for you. And speaking in tongues draws it out. Do you understand who you are? There's no way you should be losing anywhere. <laughs> the treasure is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Treasure in these earthen vessels. Praise God. 
I, I, I just believe you're missing out on so much when your tradition stops you from operating in this grace gift of speaking in tongues. So much. What is it that you go through every day that if you just draw it up, it, 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 it eventually turns into light and you begin to see it and understand it? I don't believe it just comes from nowhere. I believe a lot of things that I've been enlightened with. Uh, I tell you, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the date? Wednesday. Uh, Monday morning, I, I just finished praying in the Holy Ghost, and I am um, <clears throat> I'm studying a, a series I want to preach on sin, and it, it the, the it's a question, you know, should sin be the central idea of every man's life, because that's what we make it. And the Lord said to me, He said, uh, I caution men not to sin because it hurts people. Boy, that shook me. I said, what he said, sin hurts people. It hurts and damages relationships. It's not an issue to me because my son was sent to take care of it. So where you and I are concerned, there's peace between us. But sin affects relationships. And it violates the royal law, law of love that James talks about. He's not some God that's just on an authority kick trying to beat everybody up over sin. He says, I have taken care of all of that, and you need to go ahead and receive it. But what you need to know is when, you, when, you, when you're thinking about sinning, thinking about, think about who it's going to hurt. Well, my drinking ain't going to hurt nobody. Not why you are by yourself right now, but it may affect something down the road as a result of what it's doing to you. My looking at porno ain't doing nothing to nobody. I'm by myself. Yeah, but it'll rob your wife or a husband of a relationship of intimacy that belongs to them and not to steal pictures. It affects relationships. And I think we've taken it a little bit too far. It affects relationships. You still think it affects God. It used to, but Jesus came in and was the peace offering between God and man. Mm -mm. It, it, it affects one another. And you still think your going to heaven is going to be based on sin because it affects you and God. Now, Jesus took care of you and God. It affects us, you and me, from experiencing the power of his love and the capacity of what our relationships can produce in this earth are being affected because sin is self-centered full of pride and it is the master key to all bitterness that's what that's about so God through his mercy and love is continuing to try to inspire us where this is concerned Get your eyes on me, and I can show you what you don't need to do so you won't hurt one another. I'll teach you. When it says grace will teach you how to live righteous and upright life, that's Jesus. Jesus said, see, Jesus is grace. Grace is not a curriculum. or It is, it is Jesus, a Jesus full of grace and truth. And Jesus said, I will teach you to live righteous and upright. What is he saying? I've already taken care of the sin that affected us. We're no longer enemies. So when God, somebody tell you God mad at you, that is not the truth. Jesus is the peace offering. I think they use the word in 1 John, the propitiation for our sins, or the peace offering, or the ransom paid for our sins. So everything between you and God is fine. God's not mad at you. He's not even in a bad mood where you are concerned. But I tell you what, sin will get somebody in the horizontal relationship to be mad at you. Hurt, pain, disappointments, letdowns. That's why he's doing it. Okay, reel me back in. Where, where am I? Okay, so I, I'm thinking that look at all the stuff you miss out on by allowing the traditions of religion and men to talk you out of 
your prayer language and your time of speaking in tongues. Well, but Pastor, I just ain't never heard of that before. Well, just because you ain't never heard of it doesn't mean it's wrong. You've never seen the brain between your two ears, but you still have one. <laughs> yeah, but what folks going to think about me? See, that's your biggest problem is folk. Listen, I tell you what, when you get broke, busted, disgusted, and in pain, I guarantee you some la-la's will come out of your mouth. And I'm not talking about la-la land. I'm talking about just some stuff with la la le de lo bro ro bo sha ka la ra ba se de la de la ba so ta la ba Yeah, you ain't got time to be ashamed. But I tell you one thing. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, and people near you will begin to notice the difference. It will give you the advantage in life. You walk around and come up with a revelation. Ain't no way in the world you two could have did that on your own natural. With two PhDs, you still couldn't come up with it. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom shines light on knowledge. Wisdom is not knowledge. It shines light on knowledge. And it takes all that's been deposited to you and even may deposit something into you through revelation knowledge, but then will turn around and shine a light on it and begin to arrange it in a certain way and then reveal to you the package that will prosper and be a blessing to your life to be a blessing to somebody else's life. It's, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. When the Lord spoke to me, he said, uh, now this year, as people begin to learn about the Holy Spirit, they'll begin to see that it is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, that will complete all the things that Jesus has already made available to you. Many times Christians think, well, if Jesus did that, and then I'm going to have to do this. And you don't understand that the, he said, he said, well, here, why don't you, I want you to focus in on Jesus. Look at Jesus, praise God. And he says, you'll be changed by the Holy Ghost, the administrator of change, the administrator of manifestations. That, that's what I've been doing. I've just been, see, you got to be in peace to sin. If you, if you're not in peace, you, you're not going to be able to see Jesus. All the thing you're going to see is your problems. You're going to see your lack. You're going to see all of your insufficiency. But when you can see Jesus and you can, you can notice him in the midst of, of situations, you notice him. Praise God. I saw something today I'd, I'd, I'd never seen. Any. Man, our dear sister, she... Put on anesthesia, praising God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, Lord. We praise you. Out. Three hours later, she came out of anesthesia the same way she went in. Oh, Lord, I just pray. I said, now, nah, that just preached to me. I said, now, nah, that, that just preached to me. Oh, glory to God. That just preached to me. You go in, hallelujah, just in case you see the master. And if you don't, you come out, hallelujah, because it wasn't time. That just ministered to me. I can't ever lay on any situation without praise. Amen. Honey, when you paying your bills and don't, don't even have the money there, there ought to be a hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And if you can't think of nothing else to say, that's when you have the advantage. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Now, he, now, he's helping you to, to say stuff you don't even know. He's taking you, uh, he's digging deep and, and taking the hidden wisdom out of you. Turn your name and say, you, you got something hidden in you. Turn to the other side and say, tongues will draw it out. I can have church all by myself here, boy. It's like, it's like now look at the devil and say, 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 now look at the devil and say, what, what you going to do? Because I know, watch this, watch this. I don't understand what I'm saying, but I know it's a secret good thing. But watch this. But you don't even know what I'm saying. So I'm going to sucker punch you quite often. You can't see it coming. So what does he do? Tries to get your focus on something that makes it difficult, or it ain't really difficult, but 
challenges you to speak in tongues. You know, I just don't feel like talking in tongues. Well, talk in tongues anyway. Yes. That's the best time to do it. Amen. Well, y'all don't know what happened to me. In that case, you'll know, no, no. It might not be pretty and loud like when you're happy, but it'll still work. God ain't all been all of that. You ain't got the color of the book for him to be able to do it. You, you might, be, and I'm just, just give a little illustration. It, it happened, you might just be having some kind of day. Now, you're going to start off like that. Stay there. Stay there. Because he talked to you while you're doing that now. That's okay. Take a deep breath. Oh, oh, Santa Dalla might be crying. Kick, kick, ding, kick, get the thunder, the boo, 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 boo. Now all of a sudden, you know, ran into something that was hidden. <laughs> Glory be to God. You done bumped into something that's hidden. <laughs> to the outward eye, who doesn't understand this wonderful spiritual grace gift? It just looks like babble. But to us who know our God, uh, I heard this wonderful response. Somebody said, I just don't understand. And the response was, well, I, the reason why you don't understand because you have no understanding. Wow. Isn't that good? The reason why you don't understand because you don't have no understanding. As if something's wrong because you don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, Paul, I'm going to pray in, in tongues more than y'all. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I ain't no quitting me. I ain't quitting on nothing. Just praying the Holy Ghost. And if it doesn't happen, well, I guess it ain't time. Just keep praying. Keep praying. Keep loving. Amen. Amen. And keep communing. You'll be all right. Keep praying. Keep loving. See, don't let your circumstances get you out of love. And the Bible says in the book of Jude, praying in your most holy faith, building yourself up, praying in your most holy faith, keeping yourself in love. I'm key. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's a key, too. I told you, I don't know if it's the same group here, but I told you the Holy Spirit said to me, you want to know the, the secret to life? Yeah, Lord. He said, bearing fruit. And I knew immediately he was talking about the fruit of the Spirit. That's the secret of life, when you can walk in love and joy and, and peace and long-suffering and, 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 and depend on him for faithfulness and, and goodness. I got stuck on this, and kindness. That blew up on the inside of me, just being kind. You know, you, I taught a leadership class the other week. You can be skillful, educated, knowledgeable, but unlikable. People don't do things for you because you're skillful, knowledgeable. Most of the time they do business with you because you're likable. I want to do business with people I like. Sometimes it's unfortunate, but sometimes Christians, you're deep. And you know a lot, but you Amen. don't nobody like you. You're just not likable. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Well, thus saith the Lord of hosts and according to Philippians. I ain't even asked you all that. I just said good morning. Can I get a good morning back? I didn't ask for a sermon. I just said good morning. I want to hear all that. Or how you get up and arrogantly boast about how awesome your, your life is and how awesome your family is, you know, your children got halos. <laughs> no, nah, man, I, I, I've just learned how to become whatever I need to become to whoever I'm in front of at a particular time. I met a guy this, today, had a very interesting day today. <laughs> I met a guy today for his you, met, you ever met a Korean from Jamaica? It's the weirdest thing because I'm looking at them expecting Korean language to come out and it's got that Jamaican accent. 
I'm just saying. Uh, well, he spoke about how God led him here, and he stayed, he came to visit, but ended up staying for six months. And he's an IT expert, multi-million dollar projects and, and mine and things he's put out. And he just stopped by to say, you know, I graduated from the new membership class, and and I didn't get the chance to shake your hands, and I went through that and just wanted to tell you thank you because now I know that my whole life is about Jesus. And I said, well, look at God. You got your handshake. And we just began to, to pray about how God is using him and stuff like that. That ministers to me. It ministers to me to see that impact was made. But I guarantee you that impact was made somehow by praying in the Holy Ghost and that door opening up both for him and for me, for him to come in and see his whole life change. There was a guy from Africa that came in during Christmas. He had stage four cancer. It was the year where I did the entire series on spirit, soul, and body. He stayed throughout the entire thing. was only supposed to stay that weekend, stayed for the whole series all the way through Christmas, and he returned home completely healed of cancer. Yeah. Completely healed of cancer. Yeah. There's an advantage understanding and moving in spiritual things. Spiritual things. It's not a cuss word. Spiritual things. We're spiritual people. Well, I'm just human. No, you ain't just human no more. You used to be just human. Now you're a born-again man, a born-again woman of God. I tell you, I sense the power of God in this place. It, you ought to feel invincible knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. You ought to run into sickness and disease that don't scare you one bit. You ought to run into situations and circumstances that don't scare you one bit. Somebody says, I just don't understand how come God couldn't use me 20 years ago. Well, maybe you needed to get... See, sometimes you have to get ready to be used. So don't, don't skip the preparation. Well, when you, you weren't ready to be used. Certain things he wasn't ready to use you at that particular time. I tell you what, God's getting ready to pull a mighty, mighty army together in these last days. People that folk, the anointing is not going to be in the pulpit as, as in days of old. The anointing is in the congregation now. That's what we saw the other Sunday. The anointing is in the congregation. God has given every one of us gifts that are only helpful while here on earth. In the series, A Grace Gift by Creflo Dollar, we will see how speaking in tongues is one of those gifts with many benefits for our lives. Is this a good idea or a God idea? And this is where the grace gift of tongues comes in. When you find yourself in those different dilemmas, you pause. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost and begin to pause, then all of a sudden now, you begin to hear and see the directions a lot clearly. A Grace Gift series includes three life-changing messages for a love gift of $20 or more. When you order a Grace Gift, get Taffy Dollar's latest book, The Grace of Mutual Submission, for a love gift of $15. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Creflo and Taffy Dollar are coming to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Change Experience Friday, June 8th. Jesus has already finished. Take your healing. Take your deliverance. Take your prosperity. Take it. Get ready for three sessions of inspirational teaching, healing, and a transformational experience. When you have a problem with your faith, remember his faith. Hear about Pastor Taffy's radical revolution at 2 p.m. God has a prize for you in 2018 that's going to blow your wildest dreams. God's going to show you stuff that you've been praying for because he's the God of the surprise. Hallelujah. This is a free event, but seating is limited. See Creflo and Taffy Dollar live at the Change Experience in Charlotte, North Carolina, Friday, June 8th at the Embassy Suite Charlotte Concord Golf Resort and Spa. Save your seat now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. I love church any day of the week, and that is why you can experience church with us at World Changers on Saturday night. 
The dress is casual, the atmosphere is anointed. In your week, each Saturday night with music, worship, and fellowship. Come hear the word first at World Changers Saturday Night Church. Doors open at 5 p.m. and the experience begins at 6 p.m. Saturday night at World Changers Church International. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Richard. All Britain. Thank you for listening to WGOK. Here are the ways that you can view Life Television Network. You can now view Life Television Network on the new WGOX TV 43 by simply going to your local retail store, purchasing an antenna, and connecting it to your TV monitor. Life Television Network now has its own app. You can install the app by simply going to the App Store in your mobile device and typing in Life Television Network in the search bar. The app is also available in the iTunes Store for those with an iPhone. You can also view us on the Roku Streaming Player by going to the Channel Store and searching for Life Television Network in the Religious category. And you can also view us on our website at www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also stream Life Television Network live on YouTube by simply searching for Word of Life TV Network in the search bar. Apple TV, Google TV, and Smart TV are other ways that you can view live television. Simply go to your app store on your Google device, your Apple device, or any smart device and install iPoint Global, and there you will find Life Television Network. You can also listen to Life Radio Network by going to TuneIn.com and searching for Life Radio Network. And there you will find our station. You can also tune in to Life Radio Network on our website, which is www.wordoflifetv.org, and click on the page radio. For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can also tune in to Life Radio Network by simply going to 87.9 FM. We here at Life Television Network and Life Radio Network thank you for your continued support. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. Car smash? Hurt? Don't wait. No referral, no appointment, no cash? No problem. Waiting one month, two months, three months, that's not good. The other car insurance say, why do you wait? One month, two months, three months. Dr. Gordon D.C. will see you possibly today. I say, I'll see you right away. Don't wait. One month, two months, three months. One call, that's all, at 476-PAYING. The choice is yours. We're taking to the seas to cruise around one of the largest and most dramatic coastlines in the world, the magnificent Americas. People by a kaleidoscope of different cultures, these varied shores have attracted explorers and settlers since seafaring began. From the cold Atlantic waters of Canada, to the fabulous turquoise seas of the Caribbean, to the towering majesty of Alaska. We'll follow the sweep of this vast shoreline.
We'll explore coasts and islands in search of the unique places and peoples that make up the rich tapestry.